Wait to see if we uh if everybody's in the pew. You guys go ahead and start. All right, hey, so long. <clears throat> First and foremost, we give all praises, all honor, and all glory. Peace, love, and salutations to the corner while I am the elders and the brothers stand as different with the names of your hollow, while your house found truth and in sincerity. Are we the brothers in our GMS temple? All right, out here in the belly of the beach, in the great millstone temple. Come back with uh, another lesson. Uh, Lord's will add on to the uh, sincere Achim Wak Wak that wholeheartedly believe in the powers of the universe, man. Which is the how about you, Shai, man? Okay, and um, just going through the spirit, okay, like the brother said uh, earlier, okay, um, hey, man, what man of person are you to be? Seeing that the Heavenly Father, okay, declared the end from the beginning, pursuing uh, what's that, uh, Isaiah 46 and 10. You see what I'm saying? So, it's already done. So what person, what manner of person, how should you conduct yourself in these last days? See, what manner of person, what manner should you be walking in, man? See, conducting yourself, all right, according to the scriptures, all right, applying the scriptures, all right, which is separating you from the world. And, and these men exist on the planet Earth in these last days too, man. All right, some of them are asleep, waiting to be a crown, all right? And some of those men <laughs> on the planet Earth walking amongst you. What's that, in, uh, what's that, Ezekiel 33rd chapter? Then shall you know that a prophet was among you. So these men is here, man. All right. But for you uh, people out there that's just waking up to the truth. All right. This is the type of lifestyle you're supposed to be uh, 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 cleaving back into, Jake. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. We are the Hebrew Israelites, man. All right. What's getting ready to take place on the planet Earth is getting, getting ready to be drastic, man. All right. Terrible. It's going to get worse before it get better. All right. But at the end of the day, you have to conduct yourself in a certain manner to receive salvation. Man. You have to put on a certain lifestyle to receive mercy, man, as it is written. Okay? Yeah, because we, we are the chosen people of the scripture. You know, and salvation at the end of the day was was uh was given only onto uh Israel. You know, Israel out of all the nations of the world were only the were the only nation that was um given any form of of um, salvation but more to be more specific it was the elect okay now Yahweh Shai prayed to not take this out of the world he prayed unto Yahweh Yahweh Shai who the world and calls Jesus Christ in John chapter 17 he prayed unto the fa the father Yahweh to not take us out of the world but to keep us from the evil from the evils, which is the times that are coming. If we, when we read Ezekiel chapter seven, it tells us that evil and only evil is come. But we ain't got nothing to worry about because Yahweh Shai prayed for us to be kept from the evils. Okay, so knowing that these times, because when you go into the word evil, you break it down: Eve, time, ill, bad, bad times. When you go into that. Knowing that these bad times are getting ready to come up on earth, the time of Jacob's trouble, Deuteronomy uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7. What manner of person are you to be? Okay? Knowing that everything is going to be destroyed. Knowing that the judgment of, uh, 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 of Yahweh is getting ready to come on, on the earth. What manner of person are you to be? How are you supposed to be walking on the earth? What's your what's the spirit that, that's on you supposed to be like? Is it supposed to be how everybody else in the world is moving? Because that's the way that the, the, the way that the world moves, as the scripture says in uh, James chapter four, verse four, the adulterers and adulteresses know you not that uh, friendship with the world is an enmity with the most high. OK, the way that you walk in this world is, is against the most high. You're an enemy of the Lord if you walk according to the way that the world moves. man. OK. And that's why, again, you know, I wish I said, ye have given me the, the them that you have given me out of the world. OK, because his elect are not of this world. The ones that were given unto you, I were not of this world, man. OK. 
those of you that are calling yourselves the hopeful elect, what are you doing? Are you doing the work that that's um, that's worthy of, of salvation? Okay? Or are you walking around like a nigga? Are you doing the things that a nigga does in the world, man? Okay? And that's the topic of the video that we're going to do, man. Are you walking in the shoes that you have a shy walk? To the best of your ability. Okay? Because we striving to be like Yahweh Shai, man. We striving to be found worthy in the eyes of the Heavenly Father like Yahweh Shai was found worthy. Okay? To suffer. Are you found worthy in the eyes of the Lord to suffer for his name's sake? Because at the end of the day, the, the, the suffering of the saints is for the glorification of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Not for our sakes. It ain't gonna be like we we get being up and people are going or, or we we get we the, the the men of the Lord the elect is gonna get beamed up and be like oh yeah see it was because of me. Nah, it's gonna be because of you. How about you? Me, I was shy. Okay. You see, and you you can see the spirit that that that's on certain men, certain groups <laughs> that are in that spirit already. It's because of me. It's because of what I've done. Okay? So what man or person ought you to be, man? Brothers got the uh, precepts. Get that first one. Yeah. All right. It's the book of Second <laughs> Peter 3, verse, verse uh, 10. Verse 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the witch that... Matter of fact, somebody get... Uh, uh, that scripture where it talks about the uh, that all should come to judgment, whether for good or for evil, it's in the New Testament, Book of Shock. Okay, because the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief as a, as a thief in the night. Okay, no one knows the hour nor the day, so it's going to come a time and place when all hell is going to instantly break loose. And that time of the Lord for the time of recompense is going to come to hand. Okay? So all the works that are being done on the earth are going to be brought to, to, uh, to be weighed. Okay? To be measured. All right? So whoever has I got something in the Old Testament. Go ahead. It, it, read it. I see that he's talking 14. It says, For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. Uh, he read, uh, he read. Including every secret thing, whether it be good. Yeah, it be that's, a, that's a preacher I'm thinking of. Yeah. I, thought, I, think, I thought it was read. Uh, yeah, it is probably one. Okay. Now, read that one again and then read, read the one that you wrote. It's uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 14 says, for the, most shall, for the most high shall bring every word into judgment, including every secret thing. And it said the most high. And the brother just read that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, okay? So the day that the Lord comes back is going to be the day that the Lord renders this judgment, okay? Read that again, and the brother got the, the one in the New Testament. It says, uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 14, for the Most High shall bring every work into judgment, including every, every work into judgment, man. So that includes the men of the Lord. That includes the house of Israel. The scripture says, and it, it, it shall first begin at the house of Israel. And what shall it be of them that believe not? So the judgment is first going to start at those that believe that they're Israelites. So this is why the scriptures tell you to count the cost before you come to serve the Lord, man. Okay? Because there is going to come a heavy judgment on you first before anybody else. And you should be going through it now. You should be catching hell. You should be Sign and crying unto the Lord. Because if not, if you're not signing and crying unto the Heavenly Father, you have by Shema Al Shai, then something's going on. <laughs> and it ain't with the Heavenly Father. It's with you. Okay? Yes, sir. The most I shall bring every word into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yeah, including every single thing, every secret thing, man, because not everything that's that's done in the dark, the men see. But the heavenly father, whose eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all things, he sees what's done in the dark. He sees what's done in secret, man. So those of you that are out here 
uh, that have crept in unawares, all right, that are agents for Esau, okay, or for Satan. Hey, the Most High sees that, man. Okay? He's beholding you as we speak. Okay? And he's going to bring your judge. He's going to bring your works onto judgment. And those of you that are serving the Lord in truth and sincerity, he's going to bring your works into judgment. You're going to receive a, a, a recompense worthy of the work that you have done unto the Lord, man, which is going to be that penny a day. Okay? <laughs> which we've been working but 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 a day, man. All right? I believe one of the brothers did a math on it, man. We ain't even been working a day. Okay? Going back to to uh, when the apostles and, you know, starting from Abba Bivens came on the scene, man. We ain't even been working a day, man. But, the, the, hey, the Lord, for the elect's sake, the days shall be shortened. Okay? Oh, go ahead. Uh, where are we going? That New Testament. Oh, yeah. Can I do this real quick? Back you up? Yep. Proverbs 15 and 3. In the NLT, the Lord Yahweh is watching everywhere, keeping his eyes on both the evil and the good. Yeah, you know, he's holding all man. See, the Lord, Lord's been watching everything at the, at the end of the day because this is his script. You know, you always got a director there while the things while the camera's rolling. The director's always there to say, "Stop! All right, we need to make this change. You need to, you need to do this." And that's how the Lord, the Lord does that through His angels, man. He'll come and put a spirit on you to change things up, or he'll put a spirit on another brother to rebuke you so you can change things up, man, to go according to the to the role that the Lord wants you to play, man, if the Lord is dealing with you. Because if the Lord ain't dealing with you, then he ain't going to correct you. He's like, oh, this nigga's just a sideshow nigga on the movie anyway. I don't care what he do, as long as he just stands there and looks stupid. <laughs> Which is what the majority of you, you bozos out here in the earth have been uh, born for man for vanity just to stand there and look good and not even that <laughs> okay but for the elect's sake the lord is going to correct you whether it be through the lord dealing with you directly okay by having something happen to you or the lord getting have putting the spirit on a brother to be like hey man change this you're talking too loud in this part of the scene okay or you skipped over this line in the scene okay Go ahead. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat. Yeah. yeah, we must all appear before the judgment seat, man. Okay? All every everybody's gonna be brought up against that judgment seat, man. Except some are gonna be what? Mark of exemption. They're gonna be passed over. <laughs> okay. Through the blood of Yahweh Shai. Who he shed his blood for, starting first with the elect, and then the rest of you Israelites, the clowns of you that that don't believe on Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, then the blood that mercy is going to pass over you in your rebirth, your resurrection. Okay, when you're born into the kingdom, you dumb motherfuckers, man. <laughs> you see, because y'all clown ass motherfuckers want to talk all this shit. Okay, and we got to put it out here blunt for you motherfuckers, man, because that's the only way Jake want to fucking listen to something, when Jake talking shit to you. Because oh, that, that fucking Metal Gear Solid uh, exclamation point go off. What? <laughs> you know? Hey, you, you Jakes are going to fucking die a gruesome death, man. Those of you out there that, that are bullshitting, that are playing the fucking fiddle, acting like you, you, you with this and you ain't, the Most High is going to bring your ass out, man. Okay? And that's why you're afraid of the light, man. That's why your ass does the middle. That's why your ass does uh, does the uh, the least thing that you can do, man. Comment on the comment board. Okay? Thumbs up videos. All right? Show up on uh, duty duties. Man, you, you fucking clown, man. The Most High is going to expose a lot of fucking jakes in this, in, in, in this that are calling themselves in this truth, man. Okay? The Lord is going to expose a lot of people that are calling themselves. And as a matter of fact, the, the, the elder, uh, Manatha Zakba, in South Carolina just did 
a, a video going into that uh, into that spirit of I can save myself spirit, man. You can't save your damn self, man. You ain't gonna, nothing that you can do on this side is going to get you saved, man. Okay? You ain't going to save yourself, man. It's, you have to be ordained from the Heavenly Father. And if you're ordained, hey, guess what? You're going to show your faith through your works. If you catch my trip now, is the, author of, is the Lord the author of confusion? Okay? I'll throw that out there. <laughs> All right? Because there's nothing that you can do, but you're going to show your faith by your works. Okay? So is the author, is the Lord the author of confusion? Is that priest of Yeah, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Or bad, man. To receive the reward of what you have done in your body, man. Proverbs chapter 1 says that you shall, uh, around the 30th, 31st verse, that they shall uh, uh, receive um, the deeds that they have done. They shall eat the fruit of their own ways. Okay? See, the wicked of Israel is going to receive the fruit of their own ways, man. You want to live with, with uh, a wicked lifestyle, so you're going to receive the the, the uh, an evil judgment upon you, man. You're going to go through that uh, Sirach chapter 40. Verse 9, the sword, the famine, the pestilence, the plagues, okay, death and destruction. All of that is going to be created for the wicked. And, and you wicked, you're going to receive the fruit of your ways, man. Now, the righteous, they're going to receive what? That penny a day, the salvation, okay, the hundredfold, the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, okay, joint heirs with your house shine, man, okay. And increase it before we, yeah, before we go back. Uh, Proverbs 1, verse 31 to the NLT. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way. Yeah, and what do we do on a Passover? Which is why we, we hold that, that high holy day, man, because we are hoping to be passed over with the just of the judgment that's coming on the earth, man. And what do we do on a Passover, man? We eat the bitter root, the bitter herbs, man. And remembrance of the bitter captivity that we've had to deal with, the bitterness of the Lord that we've had to deal, that we've had to endure, man. Okay, but see, y'all getting ready to go through the real bitterness of the Lord. Okay, y'all getting ready to catch the vengeance of Yahweh by Shimei Okay, go ahead. Uh, it says, soaking on their own steam. Yeah, choking on your own schemes, man. Your own devices, man. You thought that Bitcoin was gonna save you, okay? <laughs> you thought that uh, shit, you women, you thought that Plan B was gonna save you, but now you got a new a little nugget <laughs> that you gotta deal with by a nigga that you ain't even dealing with. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, man. That's that thing that you thought you were going to get one up on the Lord. And that's coming down on every on every level, even from the elite. Like, everybody's getting ready to be put in a trick bag. Right? You know, the, the, the mastermind of chess is getting ready to take me everything. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to the theme of the lesson from the Spirit is, is pretty much those that have it and those that don't. So this is uh, Matthew 13. I'll just start at 10. It says, the disciples came, said unto him, why speakest thou unto them? So going to how thou shalt speak unto his, his chosen. I was in a a frame where only his chosen could understand. You know, so yeah, he's in public. That's like we are. We're in public. We're going live on, on YouTube. We're speaking plainly. But if you are, if you're not deemed to hear this message, not to hear. That's why I love from this verse. How should I say? He can have to hear, hear that up here. Right. And and, and and going with that too. That's why how I didn't care. He didn't care if they heard or not. Because at the end of the day, the scriptures even say, I believe it, and even says it in the gospel, that he didn't want to save everybody. Lest I should say, you know, lest I should save them. You know, prepare for their brother to repent and be converted. Yeah, let they repent and be converted. We really want to get that quick, that piece of real quick before the brother continues. But yeah, how should I didn't give a damn whether you believe or not? That's why he spoke to them in parables, man. 
He didn't give a damn. And he wasn't explaining shit to everybody, man. And you brothers got to get that through your fucking heads, man. You don't, everything doesn't need to be explained to everybody, man. If you say something, especially when you're dealing with a fucking woman, man, if you say something, you don't got to fucking explain yourself, man. It is what it is. Your house I didn't have to explain himself, so why do you, man? Don't you have the spirit of your house I in you? Okay? Shit don't need to be explained to everybody, man. I got to put the back to you. Yep, go ahead. I think Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Now the cats eat your pearls before swine. Let they trample them under their feet and turn again and bring them. That's right, man. That's the, that's the importance of not telling everybody everything, man. Because this is not for everybody, and you have to understand that in your own mind, man. Not everybody is going to receive this word. Matter of fact, the majority of the people are not going to receive this word. Hence why the apostles, starting from their elders, have said that if a nigga don't get it, we moving fucking on, man. Fuck these niggas, man. If you don't fucking believe, then fuck you, man. May the most high bring a gruesome death to you. And we're going to put it like that because that's what Jake needs to hear, man, the truth. Okay? If you don't like it, then thumbs down the video. Report it. Sucker. Because it's only until your death. That you're doing it too. Okay? Can I get this real quick to back you up? Because like you said, uh, they, have, they have to hear that, but actually, to back you up, it's, it's biblical. You know what I mean? It's biblical that we talk and take like that. Second uh, Matthew 15, verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. So you, you snap them like that in the spirit, but it's, it's the truth. Like, if you're unfaithful to your house, you want to die. Yeah. The scripture says, be, be not dismayed at their incredulity. Roughly paraphrasing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, just stand for it. Yeah. yeah. You know, how does it go? Don't let the ego do it. I got you. Oh, verse 3. Yeah, oh, good. Right. Yeah. It's going up on uh, 2nd Matthew 15 and verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. Yeah, don't let it trouble you, man. Just because somebody's going to be, fuck, man, they don't believe, man. Man, fuck that nigga, man. May a train run that nigga over. May his Walmart manager shoot his ass up on break, man. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Flag that if you want. <laughs> hey, you already know, man. Shit. <laughs> Go ahead. Concept that speak against me. That speak against me, man. Which they speak against you. How about she male shine, man? That's why the, the, the unfaithful man, they're gonna always speak up with it. Whether they say, Oh yeah, I get that. But I guarantee you, 10 minutes later, they're going to be like, man, I don't know about this, man. This Y'all niggas tripping. This and that. And, no, man. What you mean? I thought you just said you, you believe in this and that. Yeah, yeah, going back in the bushes. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Bitter in thy belly. Mm. Then you're going back into the bush. Nope. Fight is straight sin. Matter of fact, that's going to be a thumbnail. Fight is straight sin. A man that is an heretic. A heretic is a teacher of false doctrines. All right, and all of you know, they were drunk in Babylon Jews, so they all got their own philosophy and they way they see shit. And, and you know, this is my truth. But this is how I see it when the scriptures say lean not until I don't want to sin. All right. This is a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinned and dimmeth of himself. Mm -hmm. So hey, you know, the, the words went forth to, to judge you, correct you. And then once you were, you know, the Lord gave you basically two two strikes and then he strikes you out, man. That second ammunition is, you know, reject. All right? He, he says, you being condemned to your own self. So, you know, you don't must accept this word as the house I told disciples. Anyone that basically that shall not receive you, all right, uh, uh, wipe the dust off your feet. And basically, he that not receive you, don't receive me. He don't receive me, don't receive him that sent. All right? So, you don't see these words, hey, you, you being condemned of, of yourself, man. Is unto your condemnation as a brother. Say, you know, 
a quick precept to back you up is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So that's what the scriptures are <laughs> given for, which is why the men of the Lord, whenever you deal with them, what are they going to do? They're going to give you scriptures. Well, hey, I got this scripture on that. Oh, yeah, really? Well, I got a scripture on that, too. And they get to that. No, I don't want to. Tell, me what, you, tell me what you think. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to get corrected no more. They don't want to get reproved. But it was given for you, for your betterment. But, and at the end of the day, and I said this in my video yesterday, if you reject the words of the prophets, you're rejecting your house shy because the words that are in us is the spirit of your house shy. And if you reject your house shy, you reject him that sent him, which is your house. And you, hey man, it's not a, it's not a good look for you. <laughs> okay, this is why the scriptures say uh, Yahweh Shai said it himself. You know, many, you, they're gonna be knocking at that door, and he shall say, "Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I have not known you." Okay, why? Because you didn't keep his word. Ultimately, you didn't keep his spirit. Okay. You didn't keep your house shy in your heart, in your mind. Okay? You kept the spirit of your father, the devil. And that's why the will of him, you did. Which is one of the first things that you do when you follow the spirit of your father, the devil, is reject your house shy because that's what Satan is. It is. Okay? Satan is an adversary. Satan in the Hebrew. He's against. Against who? The Heavenly Father. Okay? I'll leave this brother here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we going to go back to that. My God. Yes. No, no, no. Is that preacher that you were still reading on? Okay. Uh, so go back to that Matthew. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 13. Uh, and Matthew 13, mm -hmm. verse 10. It says, And his disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Mm -hmm. Uh, him is talking about they're talking to you shot for so he responds Matthew 13 verse 11 he answers it unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given so it's simple as that uh, as same goes you know the, the world consists of has have not either you're rich or you're poor you know because you have the truth or you don't you know either you're storing up your treasure in heaven or you're storing up on earth you yeah. know you have the faith that you don't that's to it. be or not to be that's it <laughs> and that's it they go, right? <laughs> and that's where that uh, that saying comes from. To be or not to be is uh, it's a Shakespeare thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a hand thing. Yeah. It's pretty much means to live or to die. Yeah. You know? So either you're gonna live or you're gonna die. It's a choice. You know, as we're in the book of Deuteronomy, the law, you choose either day. You know, here it is. I'm gonna present you life, present you death. You know, so that choice is ultimately laid up onto you. That's why we come on earth. You have a decision to make. This is being made. Uh, uh, before you need to form, you know, but it's been playing out uh, real time as, as as all these things are justified because it's really out by some shot. But yeah, uh, uh, real, real quick, um, it was Proverbs 18 and 21, since you mentioned that, uh, life and death. Proverbs 18 and 21. <clears throat> Uh, it says, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, the things that you speak, okay, again, going back to that, that computer site, we're gonna finish, we're gonna finish it, we're gonna get to it. You know, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So, the, the tongue, that's where your life and your death is gonna lie in, man. Are you gonna receive life or are you gonna receive death? What are you speaking? Are you speaking life? I mean, are you speaking the spirit of your help by Shimei or are you speaking the things of this world which lead on to death? Okay, the wide and, and, and broad way which leadeth on to destruction. Is that what you're speaking? Is that the, 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 the verbiage that you're using, the verbiage of the world, or are you using the verbiage of the spirit, your help by Shimei or Shai spirit, onto life? Are you speaking life into existence? 
so to say. Okay? Yeah. The, the outside said as well, but Matthew 15 chapter said, uh, you know, the thing that proceed out of the mouth is coming from the heart. Right. So what you speak is from the mind. You know, that's why I say when you're drunk, you're speaking the truth. You know, because now you're you're in so drunk you can't uh your mind kind of is like for your mouth sometimes, you know, so what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and thy seed may live. And what Joshua chapter 24 say? As for me and my household, we shall serve the heavenly father. So that's that choosing the life. So the Lord has presented before everybody life and death. Some have not been given the spirit to even accept it, which is a horrible thing, but it's a beautiful thing because it, it, it gives, if everybody can get it, how would it be so special? Okay? If everybody was to be able to receive if everyone of Israel was to receive salvation here on this side, why would there be, why would the Lord need the the the, the point of of prophets, of his servants, of an elect? It wouldn't make it special. It wouldn't make this truth precious. So the Lord had to have a majority of Israel reject this word and keep a remnant onto himself to make this word precious, man. To keep this word uh, pure, because those that that uh, that truly believed in it would keep it and hold on to it. That's why the spirit of the prophets are subject unto the prophets. Those that believe have always believed, but those that have have never believed, man, or haven't believed. Okay, but the Lord has done the things that He's done for a particular reason, man, and it's just keep this word precious, man. So that in, the, in that day, he may be glorified with the utmost glory. Okay, because if everybody believed, if all of Israel believed, where is the sand of the sea, man? If all of Israel believed, where's the glory in that? Everybody's going like, well, yeah, these, all these people always believe. Of course, this would happen unto them. But see, the Lord kept the remnant. He had the, 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 the heathen nations take away the name away from us. The Lord had us come back against, uh, you know, come back to to coming across the name again. Have a, a few believe, okay? Have a few to, to to be in the spirit to continue the conversation of the, of the Lord, so that the, His name can be glorified upon the earth, man. And this is the this is the gravity of of being a servant of the Heavenly Father. Is you have to understand what you're into, man. You're not into glorifying yourself. You're not into anything that has to do with you, man. This is all about you. How about Shemel Shai, man? The work that we're doing, that the prophets are doing, Lord, will we be a part of that number, is to glorify the Lord, man. And that is a very important job. It is a, That is a heavy matter. To glorify the Heavenly Father, how about Shemel Shai, is not, a, is not something to play with, man. Because one false thing, that you say can cost you your life. Okay? And that's ultimately the fear of the Lord that you must have upon you. Okay? Which not everybody has. Okay? Go ahead, uh, Matthew 13 and uh, here verse 12 it says, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. Because we want him to Again, those mysteries, we're, we're increasing in learning. You know, as prophecies are coming to pass, we, we learn more than our forefathers. You know, the, the, the breakdown of the chip, you know, Revelation 13, verse 16, you know, the missiles, you know, you know our false names on down, we, we, we increase it to the Lord. You know? When, of course, his return, how he looks, you know, so in the past, you know, we're, we're becoming wiser as the days progress. Of course, yeah. the rest of the world, they're getting more dumb. They're going backwards, you know. Which at the end of the day is, is all working in our faith. That's what that's that's what is uh, accounted unto us for righteousness is our faith. 
So the more that we learn, the more that the Lord reveals unto us, it grows our faith more and more to the point to where we're going to be able to move mountains, man. Right? To those that believe enough. Okay? Well, all these things work unto our faith to build us up, to serve the Lord better. Okay? As a woman should. The more she sees her man, deals with her a bit more and more. Okay, yeah, he's, he's dealing with me more. The more I see that me doing this, he, he, he's treating me better. That's building her faith to be a better woman onto you because she's like, oh, okay. Well, I see there's a reward in doing this. Can I say this real quick? Go ahead. <laughs> that's that establishment of that relationship. Mm -hmm. you, know, have that, you know how you meet her, you talk to her, whatever. But you have disagreements, you have arguments. Well, that's what the Lord is doing with us. The first when you, it's all sweet when you first come in, but then you start to catch that hill, man. You have a fuck up, man. Mm -hmm. You have a start you know, to have a relationship. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then you start, then you always clean back to them. They yeah, always come back. And it's in and, and, and it's crazy because the ones that always have the, for the most part, the ones that always have the problems in the relationship at the beginning are the woman. Yeah. Because she's not used to you. Yeah. She's trying to get used to the way that you are. So she's always in contention with the man. Well, the, when you come to this truth, it's kind of like that with the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. You you're gonna have some man, I don't know about this. I don't, but the Lord is going to correct you. Hey, Father Sean, that's why the scriptures say in Revelation, for they were virgins, not foul women. The reason why you have those, like the brother said, those those second thoughts to that, oh, so why? It's because you, you, you've had another way of living. You had another man. Exactly. You dealt with other philosophies. Yeah. You dealt with other ways of life. So now he is yeah, he joined up to the, yeah, it's custom. Now you got to get custom to the Lord. Like, nah, that, this is how it's supposed to go. And you like, you know, you have no problems at first. You're like, no, but this is how I'm used to doing it. But you got to change that. You got to cast that off because now you're dealing with, the, with, with one husband, a real man, a real man one Lord. So you got to get rid of all those things. <laughs> and then once you get rid of all those things, like the brother said, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. You just got to change. But the more and more you rebuttal, the more and more he's going to press on your shit. <laughs> the best thing, you don't get it right, he's going to. Until the second and third yeah, he's he gonna cut you loose. Uh, give me that big boot. <laughs> <laughs> that bill of the morning. <laughs> hey, but it is what it is, man. <laughs> Once you cast aside, hey. Who can remedy you? <laughs> you know? And that, the, 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 the real quick, back you up. So, what manner of person are you to be? So, what manner of person? All you to be seeing that the Lord is established man on the planet Earth, you are that he's in a on a fear of power. Hey, this is an austere man I'm I'm with. He's strict as hell. He he's on my ass. So what man of person am I to be? Am I gonna keep fucking up? Am I gonna keep going by the wayside? Anything strange? And expecting a different result, that's a, that's, a, that's a, the definition of insanity. <laughs> okay? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result, that's a definition of insanity. But that's the that's what two-thirds of our people are under the spell of, insanity. Because they're thinking that they can continue to commit sin and the most high won't be okay with that. They can continue to go off, go away from the most high, and do contrary to what he states, man. But again, this is why our women are in the spirit that they're in. Because we did that to the Lord. So we got to eat of the fruit of our own way. Okay? Can I get this for you? Yeah, here's the etymology. Here's the etymology of the word conda. Um, in the 1500s, uh, it's a bird. So it's like a fruit uh, pie. A company that showed, showed away. Uh, it says, a blast. It's a particle of potassium. Uh, quote, what's the word? Uh, conduct. It says to lead or bring together. Contribute, serve. Yeah, and conduct leads you to, to better serve the Heavenly Father, man. The better conduct you have, the better you are able to serve the Heavenly Father, man. The worst, the worst conduct that you have, meaning you just doing whatever the hell you want to do, the worst conduct you're going to have towards the Lord. Okay, the worst order you're going to have towards Him. You're not going to listen to the 
to, to the spirit. Okay? You're going to go on about your own way. And the scriptures tell you to not lean onto your own understanding, man. And that's the thing is with the majority of our people is they lean onto their own understanding. They hear something or they they feel some type of way about how a certain situation shall be handled and they they go off, man. They bug out, they start talking shit, they do this, they do that, and at the end of the day, it leaves them in a worse situation than they were before. And then they wonder why so many demons are on them. It's like, bro, what, what, what you, why, mar, why are you marveling? <laughs> Look at what you did. And this is why the scriptures say, marvel not when she tra shall trespass against you, man. Because the Lord didn't, the Lord was like, man, I already knew this was coming. <laughs> he told Moses that. Yeah. <laughs> he said, well, you're going to speak with your father, and these people going to go a horn after the God. I'm going to bust you. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I already know this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so don't marvel, man. Don't be like, damn, this is what the fuck? Nah, don't no, what the fuck? You already should know, man. This is what's gonna come when you go against the conduct of the Lord, man. You're gonna go whoring off, man. You're gonna go doing some bugged out shit, some shit that you ain't supposed to be doing. You gonna talk shit. That's how it's always starts. You gonna talk shit, <laughs> and then your mind's gonna go to wandering. And you can then guess what happens when your mind goes to wandering. You go and you start to say hey to that to that other dude <laughs> across the street. Because your mind is wandering and you end up laying over there, man. Which is what our people did, man. With the Lord. Okay? We started a wave at those we, we started a <laughs> wave at those other gods and oh man, they looked interesting. Man, it looks good. It looks fun. And they went over there thinking the grass was greener on the other side. And what happened? It turned out that that shit was some moldy shit. Thorn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we got jacked up because of it. Can I say this real quick too to back you up? So we started, as soon as they came out of the delivery, they said, the parent man, see, man, I don't know what most of them been doing. Build a wooden cap. It started back then. You know, Jake just was impatient. Bro. When they were murmuring in the wilderness. Yeah, we were no baby idiot. We want to go back to the old ways. What the fuck the old ways? They dead. See the old when you come up when you come up out of this world, man, everything else should be dead to you, man. There should be no reason for you to return back to what's dead. Because you should have killed that man. If you return back to the world, that means you didn't lay that man to rest. That mean that man was just hiding in the closet. <laughs> On some Mark Kelly shit. <laughs> trapped in the closet. <laughs> okay. Wait to call out. He was just peeping. <laughs> he was like, when is what <laughs> when, when is it gonna be that time <laughs> for me to come out? <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey man, this is we laugh at it, but hey man, this shit is this is a serious matter, man. <laughs> okay? Because this is shit that we deal with, man. We, we have battles in the flesh with, with, with these spirits, man. Okay? And only the strong will survive. As the saying goes, man. These, the, the being in the, this is why, again, this, this is why the scripture says count the cost, man. This is not an easy thing to come to serve the Lord. Prepare thy soul for temptations, man. You're going to have trouble in the flesh. Especially when you're dealing with women. <laughs> Okay, which is what the Lord, what, what the Lord dealing with us, man. He knows he got trouble in the flesh. Man, like, man, I gotta deal with it. I gotta deal with these motherfuckers, man. And they are they going on <laughs> doing this. And I still, but the Lord still loves us, man. Hey, hey Jeremiah 4. I have liking people who are calmly together. So many scriptures for the Lord, man. Can a woman with that Jeremiah, uh, what's that? Fifth chapter. The Lord says, Would a man return? So that's why the woman would treat she, she's acting like that because that's you. Right. They, <laughs> they right. the Lord, you know. Yep. Jeremiah 3 and 1. They say if a man put away his wife, which is what the Lord did with us, he put us away. He's not dealing with us. Build a divorce and report to the law. Yep, exactly. Because you know, that's what Jeremiah is referring to, the law. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yep. And she go from him 
and become another man, which is what Israel did. We became another man. We went after another God, right? Shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? And this is the Lord now speaking unto Israel. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. So the Lord didn't say, I'm going to return back to you. He said, look, I know you fucked up. I know you went a horn. I want you to come back to me now. Even though you defiled, I want you to come back and return unto me. But see, all of Israel didn't. Only a remnant did. The true wives of the Lord, man. So to say, if you, if, if you catch our drift, man. Okay, the true elect will return unto the Heavenly Father. This is why the scriptures say, return unto him while he may be found. Yep, go ahead, brother. Baruch chapter 4, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For as it was your mind to go astray on the most high, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Yes. So now that you fucked up, seeing now that you came back, your ass better come back ten times stronger, man. <laughs> But yes, I was going to get the mind. That's why the Lord always harpers on where the mind is, with the heart at. So think about a woman and her, if her heart's on things that are not involved in the circle, that's where she's going to be at. I think she's thinking about you know, ex-boyfriends or whatever it may be. That's where her mind's at. You know, that's that's why that's the same when you go into the intent move. It's easy to control. It's easy to control a woman's body. It's easy, it's easy, you got to control her mind. If you control her mind, she's going to serve you. That's why the fear is so important. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and that's why the Lord likes us uh, in Revelation 14 chapter to be third. Because when, you're, when, you, when you haven't dealt with it, you are able to, to listen to that. Right. And, and that's the thing is that with, with women in, in this world, they see, they see that what a true man should be doing as being manipulated. Like, oh, you manipulate me. You trying to you trying to damn me do this and that? No, we ain't trying to manipulate. We trying to form you in a way that that I want you to be in because I'm the, I'm the man. You should be following me. That, and that's the Lord. That's how the Lord is with us. He's manipulating us. He, hey, you better motherfucking fear me. I'm gonna kill you, bro. <laughs> Straight up, that's what the Lord is saying. Then of course that we ain't telling brothers to go out there and kill their women because they. <laughs> Nah, we ain't doing it. We ain't saying that. What we're telling you is that's how a man should be because that's how the Lord is dealing with us. And the scriptures tell us to deal with our women according to wisdom. And I and I and I use that mentality when I deal with women. Is I'm gonna deal with a woman according to how the Lord deals with us, man. Now, obviously, I'm not out here killing women. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing that. I haven't done that. But the point being is. Deal, the Lord is dealing with us a specific way for a specific reason, because He knows who's gonna who's gonna endure the test of time, and it's like that. The women that can't do it, I you you too you you too much. They call you a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> they say you manipulative, you too controlling, all this and that. Like, hey, bitch, fuck you, baby. <laughs> You know, which is what the Lord eventually said to uh, to us, man. He said, man, fuck you bitches, man. Y'all want to talk about your shit? You want to talk back, right, me, and I'm giving you everything? Hey, the hell with you then. Yeah, that's the part going into a man. That's, you, you, you establish your dominance by your power. Because uh, especially in this world, women don't understand how much more powerful a man is than they are. Mm -hmm. That's why it says in the book of the Apocrypha, it says, a horse not broken, I'm going to catch them. That's why you see all women, they're mad proud because we can't put our hands on that, you know. We've been come and we've been brought down to a lower stage. Which the Lord has put his hands on us. Okay. Hence why we went through slavery. Hence why we get jacked up. But soon, here very soon, Jacob's trouble is going to come to play. And the scripture says that it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Okay. Yeah. Real fast, um, the brother, one of you brothers, spoken on that, you know, you got to get the mind of a woman. We, once again, we're using this parable as us being a comely, delicate woman unto Yahweh. I'm to so real fast. The Jeremiah 7 7, like 7 1 says, The word that came 
uh, Jeremiah for the Lord saying, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim uh, there his word and say, hear the word of the Lord, which is telling you people, all you Judah and enter at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, mend your ways. That's, you know, you got to change your ways, man. Okay, amend your ways and your doing. I will cause you to dwell in this place, the land. Okay, trust ye not in lying words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Right? For well, if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, all right? So basically, what was happening during that time was they was in a temple of the Lord, but that's all they. That's all they was concerned about. They were in the temple. They were still doing what the hell they wanted to do. They didn't get a mind over the Lord, over to the Lord. So they was physically there in the temple. All right. But mentally, they were still, they were still doing wickedness, man. Okay. So uh, what it what as the brother said, you gotta have have the mind of the person, which the ultimate the Lord has done away with the temple. He's done away all those physical things. Those that worship in the last days, those that worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. All right, so it's all about the spirit nowadays. The Lord got rid of all the physical things. All right, because you can physically do those things, but mentally your mind is actually somewhere else. Man. Right. You know. Well, the Lord said He's going to examine the, the inner part, the inner, 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 you know, say you go uh search the rules with a candlestick, you know what I'm saying? All right, quick uh Isaiah chapter five, I start at verse three. And now O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, and now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the heads thereof, and it should be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it should be trodden down. You know, also, yeah, it's actually protecting the Lord that spiritual protection around about us. That's why he sent forth, you know, the prophet to warn the people, but they didn't take no heed. Why? Because they, they were living in their folly. That's why they went. Go ahead. Yeah, who was that one king that, uh, was it, might have been um, Judah when um, the Syrians tried to come in, and it didn't have a room in history class, it didn't have a physical wall. But the Lord protected it. There was no need of a physical wall. I figured exactly the point was, but it didn't even have a physical wall, but there was no need of it because the Lord had a protection. He was a wall. He was a protection of it. So, as you said, the Lord will uh, bring down, he will take the hedge. All right, so the Lord took that hedge. Yeah, it might have been like the Nacarib or something. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it had a wall, though, because he took, he took the small city, but he couldn't get to Jerusalem to take the king. The Lord said that, you know, that you're going to be out. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some of that nature, but basically the Lord, you have a physical wall, the Lord is the head. The Lord, yeah. is the right? the Lord took that away, you know? Right, uh, yeah, so. No, no, no. Because, no, no. yeah, Jerusalem had, had a wall in the time of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, besieging the city, mm -hmm. you know, but the Lord had already made that, that proclamation that he had given everything to Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. to the people, the deep of the field, and so on and so forth. So eventually, you know, the siege became too much. And that's when your boy tried to flee after the wall was penetrated. But it's often that the Lord rules in the kingdom of men. Right, which and when uh, you see that movie about Jeremiah, you know, that shit happened while he was locked up mm -hmm. in the movie, you know, of course. And they let him go. It's going to pass when you say we're going to come back. So they kept in camp the battles. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of and a lot of you niggas was trying to flee to Egypt. Right. Yeah. To avoid Nebuchadnezzar, you're trying to flee to Egypt, but the Lord still came. Yeah. Still, still came down. Out. Yeah. yeah. Still, down and, still came and sought you out, man. Yeah. You know, and that's how it is today. Instead of dealing with the prophets, all right, dealing with the prophets got to tell you, man. You see, hey, you rather you rather stay in Egypt. Hey, the Lord's gonna bring the plagues on the Egypt again, man. And he, and he's times on you. I think Egypt as before. Exactly. That's what the scripture says. Finish this up. Isaiah 5, verse 6. It says, And I will lay it waste. It should not be pruned nor digged, but there should come up briars and thorns, 
I will also command the clouds that they rain you no know, rain upon it. So you know, going into a vision, you know, the Lord just is bringing forth that, that vision. That's why you got the book of Lamentations. You know what I'm saying? And Jeremiah, that was the chapter of the day today. You know, the fifth chapter. Jeremiah was asking the Lord to to look upon us, to have mercy upon us, because we were we were through, man. You know, the famine, the plagues, the captivity. They say our nobles have been taken out. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the temple burnt down, you know? But that's because the Lord, he did everything for us. Hey, but our people turn it back upon the Lord. So, you know what I'm saying? Going back into the title of the lesson, to be and not to be, because now the Lord have raised up his men, raised up his prophets, and, and they prophesying to you. They give you the good news, the good words. They reprove, rebuke, you know what I'm saying? Uh, keep the doctrine. No basis to, to preach the gospel until the fatherless and the widows. Hey, so what, what are you going to do now, Israel? Because no excuses now. And now that, that great judgment of the Lord is coming to pass. So what, where do you want to find yourself at, man? On, on which side? Because Yahweh Shai said he came to save the world, not to judge it. All right, so see, if you go through Yahweh Shai and be saved, uh, if not, he said, he said is there's one that, that will judge you. And as he, which is the most high, will judge you by the law now. I finish this up, Isaiah 5 and 7, for the vineyard of the Lord, Yahweh host is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. He looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, the cry. So, yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Yeah, close and preach I got some real fast off the shop. Oh, then, yeah. Oh, we have to. Oh, we close that with that. Okay, time, time to preach. Real quick, um, you brothers, yeah, I think you spoke on this earlier. Uh, Jeremiah 30 14 says, All thy lovers have forgotten. I think you. I think that's why you say the waving. You look at you know you look at when God depends on Christian. But all thy lovers have forgotten all the other gods you worship. All right, all those things. You know all the all the wicked. You know all that secret worship you're doing, man. Worshiping these other gods. But Israel was uh, uh what is it, anonymous for that, man. Okay, it says all thy lovers have forgotten. You. Yeah. They seek you, be not. You guys ain't seeking for you people, man. Here is you in the slums, you in the ghettos, you press. You the ones calling on them. Exactly. They ain't calling you. They ain't yeah. calling on them. So I actually raise up prophets for you to, to go out there to speak on to you, man. The other guys ain't doing that for you, to man. bring you back. Exactly. Yeah, that's like the, the lost one. sheep. He sent his son. Yeah. Come yeah. back. The <laughs> other guys ain't done that, bro. The scripture says the Lord have raised up prophets in Babylon. Like the Lord, hey man, that's, it's crazy, man. It's like that's how much the Lord loved his people, man. Second, uh, Second Chronicles chapter thirty-six, verse six, uh, fifteen says because he had compassion on his people, he sent his prophets be times, man. Okay, he had compassion on you, fucking dumbasses, man. Enough to 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 give you a second chance, man. And you fucking niggas blew that shit, man. You put the most highest only begotten son upon the cross, man. Yeah, so now that fucking blood is gonna be on you, man. The Lord loved you so much. He loved he so, the Lord so loved the world, meaning Israel, the cosmos, a collection of stars, the Israelites. He loved y'all so much and he's only sent his only begotten fucking son to you. And you fucking niggas rejecting him, man. Now you gotta fucking die. It's crazy, man. Only to make it right. Only gonna make it right. It's only gonna even it out. That's why that thing. That's, that's, that's the time. That's why going into the the, the, the the title, that same chapter, bro, that we're going into, it says, seeing these things shall be dissolved. What then a person are you to be? Seeing the elements shall be melted with fervent heat. Because that's what's going to purify these niggas, man. What the, it ha, the, the destruction these missiles got to come to get rid of these niggas, bro. You know what I'm saying? So the, the fire that's coming, all right, it's for you. We already going through it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to balance, it's going to balance it out. You know and see, it, it, and see the, the, the beauty of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, towards the, the love that he has towards Yahweh Shai is so great that he gave him a certain few that the Lord would make pure. Even though they worshiped other gods, even though the elect went after other beings, other, you know, other powers, the Lord still brought them back to him and cleaned them. Hey, which is Bible child, real quick, Bible child, interject, which is the uh, parable with Cornelius. 
Right. Call not unclean. Yeah, what I have clean. clean. That's the that's the <laughs> unclean. <laughs> Fucking clown, man. <laughs> the Lord has cleaned exactly. up his elect to then give unto his son because he, why would the why would the Lord give his only begotten son to a defiled whore, man? Why would he do that? He he he, he didn't. He chose a certain few to be perfect in his eyes, to be clean and be given unto him. Be the first white. And what does the scripture say about them that you love the most? The wife? You have the choice wife. You have the one that you love the most, and then you have the one that you love the least. And the one that the Lord loved the least is going to be who? Do you rest you two thirds, man? Right? Because you won't be made whole. You won't be made whole. You won't be made clean, but through the death of you. Oh, shut up. 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. For I'm jealous over you with the godly jealousy. For I have a spouse you with one husband. Because you said the Lord ain't going to give, you know, uh, you have a shy on a foul woman. All right. It says, For I have a spouse you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin. And there's a word, that word chaste. A chaste virgin, man. So that we may be presented. So again, what manner of person are you to be, man? Uh, <laughs> so you know, already been promised. <laughs> so you part of the elect. Hey, you go catch hell, but you got to be cleaned up. <laughs> you got to be presented. Tell you how it's shot. That's right, man. You gotta be clean. All your old ways, them, them, them niggerisms about you. <laughs> all that shit got to fucking go, man. All them, them, all that shit talking, all them, the, the, the doubting of the Lord and what the scriptures really mean, all that shit gotta go out the window, man. You gotta believe on the husband, on your husband, and follow him whithersoever he goes, man. <laughs> As a true wife should do. Exactly. You know? That's a terrible for you this whole time. <laughs> you <laughs> women you gotta trust your husband that the Lord is dealing with him. Yeah. Everything he says. Yeah. All right. You gotta trust him. Just like we as men are required to trust you. How about you all shy? No matter what he says, because we his woman. Right. It's that simple. We can't be doubting. Oh, the Lord said do this. Well, I don't know, man, because that seemed kind of like, and I must interject because we have to put this side note. We only talking about men of the Lord. We ain't talking about niggas in this world. But see, that's how bitches are. It's they'll do right by a nigga in the world. But when it comes to a man of the Lord, when it comes to your how about seeing your outside, they want to act all fucking crazy like they ain't never know what the fuck's going on in the world. They want to act brand fucking new. It don't make no sense, right? <laughs> It don't make no goddamn sense, but it is what it is, you know? This is just part of the game, you know? But again, the Lord knows his His sheep shall hear his voice and shall follow him, man, at the end of the day. Uh, Barack, you had a precept? Uh, yeah, I got a quick one. Book of Second Timothy, chapter two. Not starting to talk. Uh, pointing to like verse four though. It says, "Thou, thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yahusha, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit thou to faithful men, who should be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahusha Hamashiach. Right. So, you know, clean yourself up. You know, being made pure." You know, being hardened, you know, because, hey, when you come out of this world and into the truth, you got to be hard from, you know, the outside affairs, man. So pretty much, you know, purify yourself. And verse 4 says, no man at war entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So that's pretty much just another parable because we want to chase virgin, also soldiers. But we pretty much got to be clean and, and worship the Lord. You know, we come, we come out of Babylon, you know, written, getting rid of these Babylonian ways. So we pretty much got to. Uh, unforget all the shit that we learn, uh, unlearn all the things that we have learned, and, and put on that's why I see that you know, putting on this word, putting on this truth, 
You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord is coming through with, with destruction and salvation. So, and right now, it's the time to choose hey, which side you're going to be on, man. And that's what that saying goes. The thing about a woman, this thing is uh, beauty is pain. So, a woman goes through to make herself beauty and you know, beautiful. You know, the money she spends, the time she spends. How much time is a woman spending in the bathroom trying to get that's the details and you know the makeup which has just gone off, but that's going into the mindset of a man of the Lord, you know, the details, you know, things that are pleasing unto the Lord, that's what you but oh he likes green. I can wear green. I was still like that because why because it's like it's, it's not what you look like, it's what you do. Okay, that, that the scriptures say, be not hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Okay. What's pleasing unto the Lord is doing the word, man. Okay, that's what pleases the Lord is doing what he says, man. It is, it is, it's not the amount of time that you spend in the mirror. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I got the phylacteries. I got the, the greatest garment on the earth. I got all, I got the best makeup on, best dress. No, it's what you do for the Lord, man. What do you add on to the Lord? How do you add on to his ministry? Okay. That's what matters to the Lord, man. Not what you look like, because again, like Brother Brock brought out earlier, it's the Lord looks on the inward parts. Okay? The sacrifices of the Lord are a broken and contrite spirit. How bad do you want to be saved? How bad do you how bad do you feel that you went off? How bad do you feel that you that that you that you went away from the Lord, man? That can't be saved. Yeah, bro. You can't fake how bad you want to come. How bad you 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 feel for for going off, man? You can't fake that, man. You gonna trust me. I speak from experience. There's gonna be times where you're gonna cry. Why you're lonesome when you pray to the Lord, asking him for forgiveness, man? Where you're gonna cry, you're gonna shed tears. Yeah, bro, asking the Lord to forgive you. For the shit that you might have done that day or that you've done in your past, man. That's a true and sincere, broken and contrite spirit, man. And we say this humbly, man. We pray that and we just hope that we are part of that number, man. We, we, hey, man. <laughs> we can say all, we can tell you all the side stories we, we want, man. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter what we say, man. It's what the Lord sees. Blessed is that man. Say. At the end of the day, if the Lord has imputed your sins, then Yahweh Shai, he didn't basically uh, die for you. That blood won't shed for you. You know what I'm saying? That, that's it, man. You, know, you ain't covered. If you ain't covered, you ain't covered. You know, but we we give him diligence for a willing to make our call and elect. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we don't know. Even, exactly. No matter how much you do, no matter what you think you've done, and again, the elder Manat Zagba did a video I mentioned earlier in the video, entitled "That That I Can Save I Can Save My Soul Spirit <laughs> Is Demonic." You cannot save yourself, no matter how much you think that you've done for the Lord, no matter how many times you've apologized and repented, and you cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself, man, just because you say. So like you a thousand times a day. This does not mean the Lord is forgiving you, man. At the end, you will know who is forgiven and who is not, man. By what? By the through their works. Because all things as we started off with, everything's gonna be brought to, to the judgment seat. Whether for good or for evil, every work shall be brought to judgment. Okay. So let's close out on this. Unless you had something else. Yeah, I didn't finish that. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Matthew 13, uh, Matthew 13, verse 12, it says, For whosoever have, to him shall be given, he shall have more abundance. Tear of faith, man. First and foremost, he who hath faith, faith shall what? You read it again? Yep. Uh, he shall have more abundance. Shall have more in abundance, man. We're going to receive that mustard seeds, that mustard seed quantity, man. Those that have faith, okay, in truth and sincerity, more faith is going to be given on to you, man, to serve the Heavenly Father even better. 
Okay? And that's what you should be, you, that's what you should desire as the wife unto the Heavenly Father is to serve. How, how can I serve the Lord better today? That's what your holy conversation should be at. How can I serve the Heavenly Father better so that I may be covered from the judgment, from the wind that's coming? Because what does the scripture say? A man shall be a cover from the wind. The Lord is going to be a covering unto his elect from the wind, a shadow in a weary land, man. That's what the Lord is going to be unto his elect, man. <laughs> and hey, that, that's a four and one. Things just came ready to be put back in order. Turned upside right. Nature is taking its course, man. You know, that's why the Lord has set us up last. Things is getting ready to take its course. Once this destruction comes through, it's going to, by the fall, women are going to be humble, man. You know, it is going to go back to what it's supposed to be. You listen, obeying rather than saying. The Lord is setting up, man. The leaders. Oh, yeah. Attention now. Matthew 13, verse 12. It says, For whosoever hath not, of him shall be taken away. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have faith, even that which you have is going to be taken away from you, man. So that joy that you have is going to be taken away from you. That money that you have is going to be taken away from you. Okay, your life is going to be taken away from you. Because he who shall gain his life shall lose it. He who shall lose his life shall gain it. For my name's sake. Okay? Go ahead. That was it? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and get that second Peter. So we'll pull it out. Start at verse 10. It's the book of Second Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with the great noise. Yeah, the nuclear missiles, man. This is the day of the Lord. The nuclear missiles, the heaven shall pass away. Look at videos of nuclear missiles when they blast, man. The clouds around that when that mushroom cloud comes up, the clouds around it dissipate. They get pushed away. Go ahead. It says, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. Oxygen is going to melt. It means the breath you breathe is going gonna, is gonna to turn into fire in your lungs, man. Okay? The trees are going to melt. Buildings are going to melt. They're going to disappear like that in an instant. Go ahead. The earth also and the works. The earth also. <laughs> And the works that are that are it, they're in, the works of the wicked, meaning these infrastructures, these these, these uh, uh, amusement parks, these buildings, these these parks, you know, the the, the recreational parks, all this shit is gonna be dissolved, man. Go ahead. That are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person? Ought ye to be. Yeah, seeing all these things are going to be dissolved. What manner of person are you to be? Seeing that everything's going to be destroyed. Good works, all the works that you've done, all the videos that you've done, okay? All the shit talking that you've done, all this is going to be done away with. But what manner of person are you to be? Go ahead. Knowing that these things are going to come to pass, what manner of person are you to be? Knowing that all your shit talking is going to eventually. All that shit is gonna be done with all the videos that brothers did. That oh, this scoffer came up the camp, this and that. Text messages for brothers, they pray, send up curses to this and such person. All that shit is gonna be dissolved. All that shit is gonna go away. What manner of person are you to be? Knowing that these things are gonna come. Go ahead. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation? And godliness. In all holy conversation and godliness. Okay? That's what the type of person that you ought to be. In all holy conversation and godliness. And don't be a fucking hypocrite and say that, that you talking about holy conversation and all godliness, but you go contrary to what the Lord says, man. Because the Lord is going to jack your ass up even worse. Because it would have been better if you would not have known. Okay? It would have been better if you would not have known because now that the dog has returned to his vomit, now that you put down the plow, <laughs> it's going to be seven times worse upon you, man. Whereupon, if you would have stayed righteous, 
if you would have served the Lord in truth and sincerity, it would have been tenfold better for you, a hundredfold better for you. Okay? But seeing you went away is going to be seven times worse upon you. Okay? Then we strike. Then we want, then we strike something. You don't ask him. You know, he knows. That's why it doesn't start with me. He knows me. You know what type of person I am. You know I'm not playing. I'm in your mind. <laughs> so, so what, what else to do? Keep playing. You see these things, so I'll be seeing this destruction I'm putting in your brain. You have visions about you. Can't sleep at night. Seeing this, this destruction coming, what person are you supposed to be walking? You know what do what I told you to do. You're going to take this order or you can leave. Baby. I'm going to destroy you. That's right. Okay, so with that, you know, Lord's will just was edifying. We want to give all praises and glory unto Yahweh, the honors of the elders, apostles, of great millstone, and much blessing and salutations to the Akim around the four corners of the earth who are diligently pushing out this truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom also to those of you that are waking up to this truth and, and, and seeking the Lord while he may be found. You know, with that, you want to say Shalom. Shalom. Keep it secret.